This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research, unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to UCLA Bruin Talk. I'm Dave Marcus, pleased to be joined as always by Allison Taylor. I think you're going to really enjoy today's show as we take an in-depth look at the rowing program at UCLA. Before we meet our first guests, let's take a look at the upcoming events. And welcome back to UCLA Bruin Talk. UCLA's rowing program really started from nothing about 10 years ago, and now it's a nationally recognized power. And two of the reasons why are a couple of seniors who are joining us. Happy to look back at last year's season. We've got Britta Severson and Hillary Caldwell. First of all, another great year for the Bruins, a top 10 finish. Hillary, that had to be thrilling. Yeah, it was, it's been a really great season, a really great way to finish the run at UCLA, and we're just really happy to, to stay up top. Britta, you joined us as a freshman. Here you are as a senior. Has you had a chance to put it all in perspective about what your time here at UCLA has meant? No, I'm um, still like um, amazed that the four years have gone by so fast, and it's crazy that it's over already. Hillary, you've been here for four years as well, being a senior now, and you've got to feel good that you were a part of four years of some of the best years that the UCLA rowing pro program has ever had. Yeah, it's been, I mean, starting freshman year, didn't really know what to expect, and then going to nationals freshman year and then continuing that run, it's been a really great four years. You speak about nationals, and of course we have to look at national recruiting for a program like rowing. There are rowers all over the country. You came from Washington, D.C., Britta from Minneapolis. How did you get to Westwood from such far-flung places? Um, I've always wanted to go to a big school, and I've actually always been interested in UCLA before I even knew what it meant to be, going, to be a student at UCLA. So I just um, pursued it, came out here on a visit, and absolutely loved it. Now you think of Minnesota, you think of ice boating more <laughs> than you think of rowing. How did you get into rowing? Um, my brother started rowing through a teacher that, um, uh, yeah, through a teacher, and um, he really loved it, and I saw how much he enjoyed it, so I followed, um, followed along and started rowing. And you were a basketball and a volleyball player in That's high school, right. weren't you? Yep. Um, a lot more fitness needed for rowing than volleyball and basketball, so that was a, a huge change and definitely still um, 
growing my fitness as well. Hillary, same transition for you. You played volleyball and basketball in high school, and here you are out on the boat. Yeah, and I loved volleyball, loved basketball, and then I had some friends who were going to row, and my dad rowed in college, and he said, try something new. It's freshman year of high school. Like, you never know. <laughs> and I got on that water for the first race, and it was the most incredible six minutes of my life, yeah. <laughs> and it all rolled from there. Britta, you've also competed for the national team several times along with your career here at UCLA. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the difference between competing on a national team and then coming back and competing with your UCLA teammates. Well, what I really love about competing with the national team is that you're rowing with people that you compete against all year. Like um, in my boat last year, someone from Cal, someone from Virginia. So that's a really cool experience to like get to know other rowers who work just as hard as you are and um, who you're competing against all year and then you turn around and you're working with each other to represent the United States. Hillary, I want to look back on the season a little bit. You guys just finished ninth place at the NCAA championships. What were some of the highlights of this season? I know finishing in the top 10 is a great accomplishment for you guys. Um, some highlights, I guess, uh, the Clemson race when the 2V beat Virginia. That was a great race for us. Virginia is always a top program. They finished high this year. And for us to just go out and show off all the hard work that we've been doing this year and actually beat them was a really cool experience. Building a program is really like starting from scratch, building blocks and getting better and better and better. And I mean, how does it feel now to know that UCLA is one of the top programs in the country? A lot of it due to the efforts you've put in over the last four years. It's great. I mean, coming in freshman year, again, wasn't really sure what to expect. And then it was just great to see our freshman class and everyone really just buy in and say, we're working so hard every day and we want to see some results and we want to show everyone that we are national contenders and that we deserve to be here. Britta, those of us that are landlubbers see you out there and don't realize how much your legs are involved yeah. in propelling an eight boat. Tell, tell us about the, the leg strength you need to do the rowing. Yeah, it's pretty much all legs. Um, your seat is on wheels, so most of it, the drive, we call it, um, when your blade is in the water. Uh, yeah, it's mostly all legs. And then um, it's also a lot of overlapping, as much um, of as many muscles as possible. So, yeah. The timing has to be precise, doesn't it? Yes, very precise. Tell us about the role of the coxswain getting you guys in sync. Yeah, they're a very crucial part of rowing. Um, they're not just sitting there saying, row, row. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're, you know, telling us if, because you have to, like, square up your blade, so they're telling us if we're all in sync, um, pivoting over, your like, every little inch of the slide has to be matched up, and they're right there telling us if we're on or not. Yeah, gently up a stream doesn't work no. when you're racing, <laughs> no. does it? Uh, Britta, I know that you want to continue your rowing career. You're going to be trying out for the under-23 team. Uh, what do you have to do now after you finish college to, to pursue that dream? Um, you know, after so after the... Um, year at U23s or after the summer at U23s, they'll talk to you and, um, you know, let you know if they're um, good enough to come to train with the national team at Princeton. And, um, and then if not, they'll like send you to a develop, like a development camp so you can um, train until you're um, at an elite enough level. Hillary, what about you? You're about to graduate. You've spent four years rowing. What does the future hold for you? Uh, well, this summer I plan on going to France with uh, a program through UC Davis, an introduction to wine making program. I'm really excited. Um, I'm just, I'm very fascinated in the wine and restaurant industries, so the opportunity to learn more from a professor who knows a lot about the subject and then hopefully can help translate into a job in, <laughs> some, in some sort of wine or restaurant field is the goal. The, so. the, the UC system has so many varied um, aspects to it and of course mm -hmm. Davis has a great enology program that is the study of winemaking. Yeah, that's been another great thing about UCLA is the opportunity to do programs at other UCs and UCLA doesn't have a wine program but to be able to transfer to do the program through UC Davis and still get the units and everything is a really cool opportunity. Now, a lot of our viewers dream of being elite athletes but boy oh boy the chance to get 
get college credit for learning how to make wine. Oh, yeah. that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Do you know anything about the winemaking process at this point? Very little, um, but it's just so fascinating to me. And the opportunity to get hands-on experience and knowledge is so exciting, and I can't wait. Britta, you talked a little bit about working with students from other universities. You're together on a common goal, but the networking opportunities, and I think a lot of students, when they go through college, don't really focus on that. Here you are, you're going to meet somebody that may own the best restaurant in the nation in a few years. Uh, sure. it's, it's cool, isn't it, meeting all these different people with all these different interests? Yeah, definitely. It's, um, I mean, having a family of 60 girls, all very different personalities, is like a huge benefit of being part of the rowing team. Britta, you've also earned some academic honors while you've been here at UCLA and I know you guys are getting up really early in the morning to go to practice and then you're racing back and going to classes. How did you manage to balance your academic schedule and your athletic practices? You know, honestly I think rowing kept me on track and on schedule. Like I only have an hour here so I'm going to study before practice and the days when we had rowing off I would not get much done because I'd just be like, oh, I have so much time to do whatever I want, and then the day was over. So I definitely think that it kept me on track and like limited my schedule so I knew when I had to study. Hillary, what's the first thing you think of when I say the word ergometer? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> tell, that, us, tell us what that is. Basically, um, good response. Tell us what that is. It's a love-hate, mostly <laughs> hate relationship, but at the same time, there's that feeling after a 2K, which is the ERG test that I guess we dread the most. And the ergometer is the rowing machine yeah, it's, that it's measures the your machine. output. And yeah. so every time coach will give us the, the practice schedule and we'll see a 2K test, it's like, oh, God. But then <laughs> at the same time, the feeling afterwards, and you see the number, and you see all your hard work that you've put into it, and you're showing results, and you're getting faster. It's painful and you feel like you can't breathe but at the same time you're like yeah I'm I'm getting better and it's all going well and yeah on the water you've rowed both in the port and the starboard mm -hmm. positions is there a difference just that it's reversed I guess um, different sides but I guess being right-handed starboard comes a little more naturally but again you can interchange them pretty easily. Britt, I was talking to people about having you folks on, on our show, and they said, okay, you got to ask them about splashing. In practices, <laughs> do you ever get in a position where you're just wildly splashing your teammates with the paddles? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, we have this one drill, too, that um, to practice on our catches is when the blade first goes in. We um, A good way to like get good at that is to practice your splashing. So we have this drill where you see how much you can splash the person behind you. <laughs> but yes, there are times where it's like, oh, I wish you would stop splashing. Me. Now, in a race, <laughs> do you guys get splash in a race? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you've got the competition going, you've got water flying in your face. Yeah. There's a lot to think about when you're out Definitely. there. Definitely, especially um, at NCAAs this year, the water was crazy. It was raining the first two days, um, lots of wind. So, I mean, the boat's rocking, and um, it's definitely hard to focus in when all that is going on around you. Yeah, June in Indianapolis, uh, remain in Indianapolis, not always the best time <laughs> yeah. to be there. It's an interesting place to be. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Hillary uh, spoke a moment ago about the most exciting six minutes. How do you maintain your mental focus on a race that long? Oh, um, you know, you just kind of listen into your coxswain, and she kind of gets you through the race, tells you where you are, where you are in relation to the other boats, and um, will like pull moves during a race. So she'll be like, okay, 10 strokes, we're going to gain an inch on them. So like having those little things um, throughout the race definitely helps um, helps it go faster. And um, yeah, you usually, you usually like make a move halfway through the race, so then you like, you know, I always think of it when I get to the thousand meter mark which is halfway I'm like okay only a thousand meters left like I think of it kind of as like a whole new race and um, only like four minutes left which doesn't sound like a lot but when you're can't breathe <laughs> after the first 30 seconds of the race four <laughs> minutes is a lot more <laughs> Hillary, looking forward to the program after you guys are gone. I'm sure you wanted to leave some kind of legacy on the younger girls and make sure that this program continues to excel in years to come. What kind of advice did you leave with the younger girls? Um, really just go out and give your hardest every day. I mean, that was 
a big part of the goal, the team goals this year is we wanted to prove that last year wasn't a fluke and that getting to nationals isn't a crazy thing for us and that it's it's going to be a thing that every single year we're expected to be national contenders and that means you have to work and it's not easy but it's so rewarding to be validated that you are ninth in the country and you're a top 10 program and you're someone that other schools need to watch out for so it's a great feeling and it sucks some days at practice but then at the end of the season it's all worth it you have both been great ambassadors for the UCLA program and you've put in a lot of hard work congratulations on seeing your efforts pay off thank you and thank you, thank you for joining us on Bruin Talk thank, thank you for having us. and we're gonna come right back with more Bruin Talk after this brief public service announcement A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Hi everybody and welcome back to Bruin Talk. It is now time to honor our student athlete of the week. This week, we honor Marcus Jerome as our Athlete of the Week. Jerome represented the Bruins in Urbana, Illinois, as he competed in the NCAA Men's Tennis Singles Championships. Jerome was one of two Bruins to compete in the Men's Singles Tournament. He advanced to the round of 16 after defeating Duke's Michael Redlicky, 7-5, 6-3. In addition to his athletic success, Jerome was recognized for his academic achievements as he earned a Pac-12 academic honorable mention. Congratulations, Marco. We wish you luck in the seasons to come. If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at uclabruins.com. And when you think of UCLA athletics, there's great sports up and down the board, but one that has international notoriety is UCLA basketball. It is synonymous with excellence. We're very happy to have a new coach for UCLA joining us today. David Grace joins the men's basketball staff. Thanks for joining us on Bruin Talk. Thanks for having me. Coach, after five very successful seasons as an assistant at Oregon State, and of course you've got great coaching experience before that, but you got hired here and the first thing you said was, I couldn't turn down UCLA. No. Tell us what you meant. You no, know, you, you just can't turn down UCLA with the history, the academics, the location. Um, you just, you know, it's just an exciting place to be and a great place to recruit to and a great, pla uh, a great place to be a part of. Now I know that you were probably more familiar with Craig Neal who took over at New Mexico right. when Steve Alford got hired here right. than you were with Steve Alford. You had recruited right. Craig Neal's son. Tell right. us about your contact with Steve Alford, how you got offered this job. You know, it was really strange. You know, I thought I was going to get the, the New Mexico job and uh, in fact, Coach Craig um, Neal, he, 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 he was in contact with me. So so when I touched down in, in, in at the Final Four, uh, I got a phone call from a friend said that UCLA was interested in me. And, you know, I, I had spoken with Coach Alfred maybe three or four times, watching Coach Neal's son. Actually, Coach Alfred's son played on the same AAU team, so we had some interaction, but not a whole lot. So. Uh, when I got the phone call, it was like change gears and get ready for that interview, and it went well. Coach, you've, you and the new coaching staff have been here for a couple months now, and we were talking before the show that yes. it's been a hectic time yeah. for you guys. But how has your first few weeks been? What is the staff kind of focusing on at yeah. this point? Well, it's been very exciting. You know, first of all, you have to focus on the current players and take care of their needs and, and let them know that you care about them, you love them, and you want everything that they want in, out, of, out of their experience. So that's the most important thing when you take care of the current players. And then from there, you know, you always have to recruit. and. Um, and that's what he brought me in here to do. And, and we went right on the road right away. And it's, so it's been very hectic because I have to learn Coach Alford's way of, of recruiting and what he wants and, uh, and fulfill those needs. So it's been exciting but very hectic. Your recruiting roots in Los Angeles are pretty solid, though. You recruited this territory before, so you know this community in and out, don't you? Yes, you know, and I was an AAU coach here locally. So being on that side of the coin and understanding what the AAU coaches and especially the high school coaches go through has helped me a lot here. And, and the relationships that I've built over the years is, uh, 
has proven to be pretty good. The history of college basketball and the philosophies have changed so much over the past decade. We think a lot about the one and done players, right. but the Bruins have a pretty good core coming back, don't they? Yeah, we're very excited about them. Um, they're a great group of guys. Um, every day I get to interact with them and I've coached against them, so we didn't have much success doing that. <laughs> so I'm glad on, I'm on, on this team now. And they're a great group of young men and we have some great guys coming in to mesh in with them and I think we're going to have an outstanding year. A year ago, I, I do the women's basketball play-by-play, -play, and yeah. so I was in Pauley Pavilion when all the staff from all the programs got together to see the brand new building. Right. And two kids came up to me and introduced themselves. Jordan Adams and Tony Parker walked up, told me who they were, the nicest guys in the world. They didn't know who I was. You've got yeah. special kids coming to UCLA, yeah, don't you? Incredible young men. You know, I, I recruited Tony uh, when he was in Atlanta, and, uh, and and we try to recruit Jordan Adams as well. So. Um, I knew them from from, the, from those experiences, but when you get to be with them every day, um, they're just incredible young men. Not only have you spent a lot of time coaching, but you were in the military for yeah. 20 or so years, you've refereed, you've coached yes. on several different continents. Yes. How do you think all of that comes together and culminates into your coaching experience here at UCLA? I'm sure you've learned a lot over the years. Well, every day I try to learn. I try to learn from everybody, and those experiences that I was able to, to, to experience um, has helped me greatly. Um, the military is the best of what they do. You know, every day you have to win. There's no losses in the military or we suffer casualties. So um, um, they taught me how to be a winner. They taught me how to have integrity, and they taught me how to approach every day to be in the best, you know, and excellence in all we do, and that's what we have here at UCLA. We talk about UCLA basketball. There's a standard of excellence here. Right. And sometimes there are growing pains with a new staff, new players. Uh, what are you looking for this year? How's it going to go when the Bruins start getting out on the hardwood? Well, we still have that standard, and we're going to keep it at that level, and we're going to have our student athletes rise to that occasion. We really like this group. You know, I think the sky's the limit for this year. I don't, you know, when you get a new staff, then you say, well, in three years we'll be good, but not with this group. I mean, Coach Alfred has spent 22 years as a head coach. He's won at every level, and he has a lot of knowledge that he's going to apply that to our our program, and I, th I think we can have excellence this year. I, I don't know if we can win a national title, but we're going to definitely try. Not only have you coached and refereed, <laughs> but you are also a high school teacher. Yeah. And I'm sure that also translates into being a, a college coach. But how does dealing with high school kids yeah. compare to college kids? Well, I also I, I, I coached and taught in the inner city school. And um, that was the, probably the best time that I've had as a mentor and as, as, as an educator. And, you know, every chance you get to make a difference in young people's lives, you have to do that. And that's what I'm all about, just trying to make a positive positive impact and make a difference on young people's life. I really enjoyed the classroom. I enjoyed the high school experience. Um, it was just uh, basketball took me to this level. We talked about Pauley Pavilion and the renovation of a year ago. It's a spectacular facility. Oh, what are your thoughts going in there thinking, wait a minute, I work here. This That's is my right. home court. I mean, every day I kind of look down at my polo to say, oh, those are those news initials. You know, uh, Pauley Pavilion is a, is a palace and it's a great place to recruit to and uh, every day I walk past there going to my office and it's just a blessing to have that type of facility along with the other buildings on campus and the, uh, the Bruin Walk and the people is what, is what make it and uh, we're definitely selling that right now. Let's talk about the four initials. Yes. Do the young players of today understand the legacy of UCLA? Uh, not as much as the parents do. You know, you still have to sell that to them because, you know, we haven't won a national championship since 1997 and the folks that we're recruiting now probably didn't, didn't experience that. They so might not have even been born yes, yet. Yes, <laughs> yes. So we have to instill that into them and, and say, hey, this is the tradition that we have and this is what we want you to come to. Um, and they kind of get it. You know, their parents talk to them about it. And uh, so we have to re-educate, yes. You founded the Arizona Magic AAU team, and right. we were talking a little bit about the, before the show about how important those AAU programs right. are, especially these days. How important do you feel like it is for you to maintain those connections with those AAU coaches all across the country? Well, in anything you do, you have to have great communication, and you have to have great relationships, and that's what I've tried to build over the years. When I was coaching AAU, I didn't just compete against my opponent. I got to know them. 
because I wanted to be a D Division I uh, assistant and head coach. So um, those relationships over the years has helped me a lot. Understanding their side of the coin. I, I was very fortunate to be an AAU coach and a high school coach. So I know what those, those mentors and, and folks that are around the young people um, go through every day. So it's helped me a lot. There are a lot of aspects to being a college coach. Recruiting is a huge part of it. But then you've got to work with the other coaches. You mentioned right. Coach Alford, and you've got other assistants coming right. in. It's a brand new staff at UCLA. Tell right. us about the process of learning how to work with each other's styles and each other's personalities. Well, I know Coach Broussard for years. When I was a high school coach, Coach Broussard used to call me and recruit my players. So I got to know him through that, and we've been good friends since then. Uh, coach Schilling, I, I do not know, so I'm building that relationship with him. Outstanding in person, outstanding human being. Coach Offer has done a great job assembling a staff that has some diversity to it and as well as great people. And I'm, so, I, I'm excited when I come to work every day to get to work with these individuals and learn from them. And we've, men, we've meshed very well. The Pac-12 has more national exposure now than it's ever had with right. the Pac-12 network. A lot of your games are going to be on TV, but a lot of them are at awkward times. Right. Is it tough to get prepared to play at that different start times? Uh, I, I, not for me. You know, you know, anytime you have a game day, you, you're excited. I'll play any day. I'll play at 8 o'clock in the morning if you ask me to. So <laughs> it, it, it's, it doesn't affect me. But um, certain times you have to make sure the logistics are right and you have to have the, our student athletes prepared to play at those certain times. So you have to move those things around. But, you know, the different times are, are a good thing because so we get some exposure back on the East Coast. You know, the earlier the time start, some of the East Coast um, viewers get to see us play and it helps with recruiting. Last year, Larry drew the second Bruins yes. starting point guard, really kind of molded into this great leader for the team. And right. obviously, he has vacated that spot. Right. So who are you going to be looking to this year to not only fulfill that point guard position, but also right. that leadership role? Well, the leadership role will come with everybody getting on campus. And, and as we go through the summer and as we prepare for the season, a leader will, will, will appear. You know, we have new leadership as far as the coaches go. So everything has to blend together. So um, right now, that's, you know, you have to go on the leadership of the Ware Twins as they are seniors, and uh, you have to lean on those, those two young men. But, you know, uh, it, it doesn't have to be just them all the time. It could be other people. You know, from the point guard's perspective, we have some options. You know, Kyle Anderson can play the point guard, and, and I think he'll do an outstanding job. And we can move some other people around. Bryce Offord is coming in as a freshman. Uh, Zach Levine can handle some of those duties, and as well as some other guys on our on our team so we'll have that covered and we'll do a great job Kyle Anderson is one of the most intriguing players I've yes. ever seen six foot nine and you look around you don't think he's moving that fast and then all of a sudden how did he get there right when you were uh, scouting against right. UCLA to get prepared to play him how did you approach somebody like Kyle Anderson well we, we at Oregon State attempted to recruit him but we just knew we, we weren't going to get him so we didn't waste our energy on that but Kyle is a, is a special young man you know his nickname is slow mo so you think everything he does is slow, but he's effective, and effective so much he's on the NBA radar. So we, we're very blessed to have a young man with that size and the ability to play multi positions. So we're excited about him. That's such a hard thing when you're recruiting kids you know are on the NBA radar. Boy, yeah. it's such a, I mean, sometimes you think maybe you get kids that aren't quite as good, let them stay four yeah. years, but you got to go for the talent, don't you? You have to. You know, you want a young man to spend four years with you, but um, again, you also want the young man to reach his dreams. And we, we are not... Uh, going to recruit a kid um, just because of those those factors. If, if the young man's one and done and we think he can help us, we're going to recruit him as well. And if we get a three-year to four-year guy, we're excited about that as well. Coach, you talk about things going fast. This segment has gone fast. Yes. We're out of time. We've had a Thank wonderful you. time talking to you. Thank I know you. that all the Bruin fans are really looking forward to the new era, having you on staff with Coach Alfred, and we look forward to great things for the Bruins. Well, appreciate it, and thank you for letting me come over and spend some time with you. And thank you for joining us on UCLA Bruin Talk. The time has flown by, but we'll be back next week thank with you. another great show. Until then, for Allison Taylor, I'm Dave Marcus saying so long from Westwood. We'll see you next week.